Well, Braden got me up early, made me come out on first light, trying to outsmart the wily brown trout. We're gonna make a big pass through the river real fast. We're gonna hit some big pools, just run around, see if we can find one big one. Uh, it's getting it's pretty nice out, it's getting late November. And so we're gonna just work through, through all these big pools, just gonna be throwing big stuff and seeing if we can find a, a whopper. I'm never in a rush to start a pool. <clears throat> I've caught a lot of fish in that inside where I, I'm gonna go out and walk out there in a minute. This is the closest thing I do to swinging on these big pools. I still animate my fly. I still want the fly coming sideways, but I, and I try to keep it so that it's still coming in here, but at one point it is gonna go tail first and so I'm letting it sink out there. But then you see I'm still animating. I'm not doing it fast. It's a morning, it's a morning deal. I'm, I'm starting my flies just kind of slow, not really. I'm just covering every inch of this water. But I'm not gonna be I'm not going to I'm just I'm not gonna go really fast on the flies for a while. <clears throat> you know, like I, I say this constantly. You've got to change color, and you've got to change profile, and probably more important than anything, you change your cadence or the speed of your retrieves. Don't just, don't be a one-trick pony and just simply pull the line. So what I'm doing is I'm just kinda, <clears throat> I'm just kinda, I'm just doing this to the fly. I'm trying to get the fly low, and I'm just letting it swing close to the bottom but I'm animating the fly so it keeps moving up and down it's not real not real fast not real slow just kind of bumping it to keep it moving and I'm gonna just keep throwing this a little bit upstream and letting it sink get it down it's about a four foot deep hole which is a really deep hole for this river and I'm just gonna work it back it's pretty early they're not going to come climbing on it for a while yet if you're going to you know a lot of times on this they'll just stop the fly there's a lot of spawning activity in this river right now and so we're looking for fish that are staged up not active there's tons of fish spawning within eyesight of here on the other side I'm just looking for something staged up or one that's done, preferably staged up, just waiting. They, they spawn for months here. They'll spawn well into January here. I don't like to play with those fish. I'm throwing slightly, about a 15 degrees upstream, just to give it sink time. And then I'm just crossing this seam, which is about 10 feet out from me right now. Generally speaking, I do better in the lower end of this anyway. But you can see I'm not really animating the fly too fast. It's just after sun up. Water's cold, my hand's cold. <laughs> oh. oh, little guy. When I'm in deep water like this, I don't like to strip my line too much. Little brownie, little male, nice little fish. Started out. Has him. This is a pre-spawn fish. He's nowhere near. It's, well, he's pretty juvenile to be spawning anyway. But there's a little buck. <clears throat> what I was saying is that I don't like to. If you can, when you're in deep water like this, it does carry it downstream from you. But you know, sinking lines, if you're in this water and you start playing your fish and the line goes down, it gets hooked on rocks underneath you. I go to my reel as quick as I can so I'm not tripping on the line or getting it hung on a rock or something. He was on it pretty quick. He didn't, he didn't let it uh, sink too much, which is good. That means they're active. The current catches the line, you let it sink 
now there's a big belly in it. And so one, I'm in contact with my fly always. There's no slack in there. And it keeps the fly tracing the line, tracking the line coming back. You know, and a lot of people, you know, steelhead influence, meticular, like to swing it out and let it hang. I have no problem with that whatsoever. <clears throat> I do it here. I do it on a lot of these big pools, especially when the seams start converging, like what's happening below me where I'm getting the slow current pump pushing into this one. Had a little tap right there. If you want to, you know, fish the hang right there, that's no problem. It's not, it's not that I don't ever let my fly swing. It's just, I prefer to have it moving, but on this particular run, because you're sweeping it and you've got a lot of fish. I'm sure there's a lot of fish out there have seen that fly. But on a sinking line in this dead of a current, you're not going to get too much of a hang time down here. It's gonna, you're going to set up just like that, right? I, I just hung bottom because <clears throat> it's just too slow to hang it. I don't know if you just saw what I did, but I'm hung on a rock. I was hung on a rock and I... I don't want to walk down there and I pulled on it and let it go, let it bounce and it'll dislodge your fly for you. <clears throat> if you still had fish, you've done that a thousand times. But when you're actively fishing streamers, you don't. And that's what I was saying about the whole run is that it's too slow for me to do a hang down there with a 250 grain head or line. So I'm kind of actively keeping it moving. I also get a lot of giant whiteys right here. I mean, biggins. When a whitey eats a dungeon, you know it's somebody. I used to fish British Columbia with Mike Craig a lot. And he always said I was, a, called me the goat. So I was always climbing up on rocks trying to see better. I think I might switch up to white. Too lazy to put my readers on. Hoping I'm even close. I'm holding my flies a little longer. I was on black for quite a while through there. But I did get one in the middle, but uh, I'm holding mostly because my hands are freezing. I don't want to have to dig in there and change flies. I can see spawners on the other side, and I can see a bed in the middle also. And so I'm going to completely avoid that. There's one up above me. I'm just going to go below all this. Staging water in this river is often middle water like this that's that's uh, a little faster than you would think of as holding or staging water. And you see that a lot. A lot, a lot of rivers do that actually. Where, where you, oh, that's a good puller. Oh. I can see my fly going upstream. Nice puller, but he's not that big. Wow, is he dark. Come over here, buddy. Show the world who you are. Another little guy. Hit it like he was somebody. Come here. Come here, little feller. Got a face full of kitty. Pre-spawn still, he's not too not too colored up, dark, but not too colored up. Pretty fish. So that is about fifth cast with white. So what that generally tells me is that my laziness cost me fish because I fished for, I don't know, 20 or 30 minutes through the middle. I got one in the middle, but 20 or 30 minutes, and then I just made, I don't know, four, five, six casts and got one on white. You never know if it was just that one fish that's where he, he was happy, but it always makes you wonder if you weren't, if your laziness didn't just cap, cost you the fish. We'll see. If they just start lighting this up, we'll know that it definitely was the color. I see a couple reds out there. I'm going to, I don't see any fish on them, but I don't want to, I'm just going to walk down below this. I think I'm close to those breads. There's 
from up there, from the camera's view, you probably can see whites. There's some weed beds out here too. What I do, I mean, what I'm looking for, I just want to make sure there's no actively spawning fish. Like, you know, you can usually see hens that are digging and stuff like that. I mean, I just, I just get away from them. I don't, you're, you're kind of fishing spawners no matter what you do. When you go and pretend like you're, you're not, I mean, it's fall, there's fish, are, they're all here to spawn, but I'm not going to actively look towards something that's actually, you know, fish are moving around on beds. And I can't see well enough this morning. I don't see any active spawning going on or anything. Matter of fact, I don't see any fish at all out there on these. And they may be weed beds that I'm kind of getting deked by because it's kind of dark right here. I can see three big, like, you know, greeny colored weed beds in front of me. And I've just, I kind of got the idea that I saw something out, on, out in that middle. So I'm just, I'm just getting away from it. They said they're, they're, everything's here is spawning. So at some point, whether they're done or just starting or in the middle of it, I'm just staying away from the activity zones. That's a really good bucket right there. I, I kind of hated going past it, but I just don't. Just let it, let them do their thing. This water's fast. When you get an eat in here, it's usually pretty aggressive. It's the light's good enough right now so I can track my fly. I can see it all the way back across. So a lot of times you'll see them coming to get it. You gotta be careful when you can see them, boy. They'll, <laughs> at least I do. I, I tend to set it a little bit too early and miss them completely. I see them, see their faces open up, their mouth open, and I tend to pull a little quick. I really like, this is gonna plunge right here. It's a big, big plunge pool. I threw a little higher than I would normally, get my fly a little bit deeper. So when it comes over the front of that face of that plunge, where it's dropping another foot and a half probably. <clears throat> I'm just gonna hit these buckets as I go through here where Real short, real close. We got a little guy chasing me. And I'm going to throw it right into the push where it pushes the water down. And then I'll come out on this edge. It's pretty fast for any. I can't imagine a real fish sitting on this, but like those smaller ones we got earlier, they might be. Even water that looks really fast like that. If you look where it boils over, where it pushes down and starts coming back up, the middle of those are all soft spots where the fish can sit, even though it looks just like it's roaring through there. <clears throat> I wouldn't put a lot of confidence in finding a giant sitting there. More likely they would come up to this stage in the bottom of it and then just swim right through it. But you're here, so fish it. The fall's different because they're moving. They're not, you know, and these could be lake fish too. These could be fish out of Quake Lake, Ennis Lake. They can come a long ways. And if they're just, their sole mission is just to get up there and get to the, up to the top, they can be anywhere. I mean, they break a lot of rules. When I was in Michigan, and I would fish the uh, Lake Michigan fish. They could do some of the dumbest things. I mean, they're giants and they're, they're just there to spawn and they, they would set up in some of the craziest spots. So you just, you never know where you're gonna find them. The other thing about this water that you can see, I'm sure, is that it has a lot of gradient. And when the water goes downhill, you know, it's kind of cascaded there, flattened. Now it goes down in a pretty steep, I mean, and I never ever find fish with a lot of gradient. I don't think they like to sit there with the water pushing down in their head. So I kind of, 
I kind of walked through it pretty quick, but I'm going to keep looking for something that has a break where all this water's descending quite quickly, but somewhere out there you'll see a spot where it's just kind of plateaued and flattened out a little bit. And those are really good holding spots when they're coming up if you can find them. This one doesn't have a lot of it, but it doesn't take much of a break, so just pay attention for anything that's anything that's there's nothing that I see out there that's not still dropping. So I'm gonna drop below this and I can see it starting to flatten out by this end of this stump. It gave me a little break and I'll just keep moving through looking for resting areas. If you run sinking lines and you have rock bars on like I do, right there, you let this line come down here, step on it once, you will cut your line in half. It is not the line company's fault. When you get on this shallow stuff, just don't let your line set, hit the ground because you'll step on it, man. You might not notice it for a minute, but usually the line breaks on your next cast. So speaking from experience. It's pretty frayed too, I got a hold of it. Yeah. Short. Were you filming that? What happened? <laughs> well, we broke for lunch. We went back, came back, fished in the afternoon. About three hours ago, I was saying, be careful with your line if you're standing on it. It's not the company's fault if you break it in half. And I told Braden, I said, oh, I got a little nick in my line. And I was showing it to the camera and I went like this with two fingers and broke it and lost 15 foot of my head. So I have a shorter line this afternoon. <laughs> but when you're walking, in particular here on the Madison, we're always wearing rock bars or studs or whatever you're gonna wear. And this uh, is what happens when you step on one on a rock. So I will have a half as long a head as I had before I started. Or more. I'll see, I might have a very... <laughs> Looks like I should cut off about half of it. Maybe a little bit more than that. I frequently talk about... I'm always, I fish out of a boat a lot and I'm... And I often say, if I have my preference, I'd be in the middle and fish to the edge when I'm streamer fishing. <clears throat> and this is a perfect example. This, this upper river, I can get in the middle and I can fish to the banks and I can look at the buckets and I'm from the center. Generally speaking, you don't have that opportunity in a lot of rivers. And so we talk a lot about fishing upstream. Here, that, that was like the perfect run right there. It's, it's got a kick coming this way, so I got a lot of control on my fly. It's got a nice deep cut over there, soft water, drops out here. I'm gonna walk up this from the middle. I'm gonna walk up, fish this edge. A lot of shallow water up here, so I'll be moving pretty quick. I've still got a 250 grain line on, it doesn't matter. I won't be getting hung up unless I pause too long. And so I'm gonna just fish these little buckets up, see if there's anything staged up waiting to go up and see what happens. I talk about yellow light a lot. I've got this rule. I don't care how good it is, if the light gets yellow, which it kind of, usually that's a four or five o'clock in the afternoon thing. It's kind of doing that this morning. I go to tan. I, it's just something I do. It's always worked out for me. I fished for a little longer than normal. I, I went from black to white to tan. I held white for a long time, you know, got a, got a couple of fish on, or one fish on each color. But it's kind of yellow right now, so I switched up. And so I'm gonna just keep moving through this. I'm gonna be fishing really shallow water. I put on a, a tan tits up. It's got popper tails in the back end of it, so it keeps it a little floaty. So it's not diving quite as fast. It's super fun fly because you see them eat it almost always because it's generally not too deep. 
So I'm just gonna do like I said, I'm gonna start on these. It's pretty skinny, the water's really low right now, but I'm gonna fish these little tiny buckets over there. They might only be like most of the water, you can see most of the water's maybe this deep on me. They might be buckets from this to this deep and just a little softer and I'm just gonna hit them. I'm gonna be, I'll be through this in five minutes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a couple shots, move up three, four, five feet, take a couple shots, move up four or five feet and just keep moving. I'm looking for players. I'm not gonna, you, you don't wanna sit on a run and just beat it up, and, uh, particularly in the fall. You, you gotta find the players and so that's what I'm gonna hunt for. I forgot my hat so I can't see in this, this reflection, but <clears throat> when I talk about, when I was talking about uh, holding water and how these fish will set up in this water just to sit, just for, it could be minutes, could be all day, you don't know. But this is a little boulder field and it's only, this is like six inches difference in depth. And so when I walk up through this, I hit every one of these little tiny buckets. It's, it's pretty skinny right now. Normally there'd be another eight, 10 inches of water. And I, I mean, you'd be surprised the size of fish that'll come out of these just nothing holding areas. Just don't. Don't just bowl through it. But basically, we're just looking for anything that's soft. I think we're a little skinny today for any of this stuff. Oh! 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 On the pickup. Mmm, that was a big one. You see it? Nice roll. So a couple of, <laughs> just missed a big fish. Um, when you see water like this, one thing you can be sure of, there's no spawning activity in this much water, right? This fast of water. And so, again, what I'm doing is I'm walking through, that was pretty skinny and I'm getting up here. Now I'm in a foot of water and you can see all these boulders. And the backside of every dump, where every one of those dumps goes over the rock, the, the water dumping over. When it dumps over, it makes a negative current and those fish will sit pretty, without much effort really. And so you know these fish aren't spawning. And so you, you can fish it with confidence that you're not walking on the spawning beds or near them. Most of the waters, there's no, no activity around me. And so this is gonna, it's, when you find these soft spots, it's a good spot for them to rest while they're waiting to go up and do their business. So I just hit those two right there, those two rocks. I went through right there. And man, there's a little soft bucket and this big one just, I was picking up to, it, it's amazing, you, it happens to me all the time. You're, you're picking up to cast and you see the fish on it and you for, whatever reason, just can't stop the fly, and you pick it up. Fun to see, frustrating. So I'm, I'm working this, there's a real soft bucket right there that doesn't look like there would be, but I wanna get to that edge, you can see over there. So I'm fishing everything close to me before I go up and over. I said I forgot my hat so I can't see jack in here but I can see that soft edge I'm gonna hit this from the middle because I'm gonna get kicked out of there really quick I'm gonna hit the middle I'm just gonna jig through it and then I'll hit the top of it basically you don't have much time in this one I'm only trying to hit about four or five foot of that whole run because the middle here is going to kind of reach out, pause it a little bit. I'm just trying to give the fish enough time to get to the fly. There's a little buck on this inside gravel. 
quite a while ago, I don't know, four or five years ago, I shot a video on how to fish a red. And you can see there's a, a little buck right there, about 18, 20 inches, and there's a giant ass hen up above it. She's a big one. And I, you know, after four or five years of fishing, I still think the best way to fish a spawning red is to not to, so don't. And we're moving up to get away from these spawners. Hit it on the swing. Uh-huh. He's a jumper. Ain't it hanging? There goes that theory. I think this is where I was trying to get out deeper when I didn't work. I think that's what I did when Johnny was watching me. Whoa. One step and I go up to my waist. This just keeps going. It would make for good video though. We had, when we went up to that upper pool where I was trying to drown, it was, uh, we got one on an olive dungeon, but they're not really, I'm not seeing fish push at anything really. Mm. That was a lazy ass roll. That was a real one. Oh boy. Never touched me. Just kind of did one of these things. Not really like, really just didn't do anything. Just right there in that black water. Right there. Just kind of. I don't know. He'd have made the he'd have made the A roll. Oh. Thumped it. He thumped it. Well, worked out pretty good this morning. Kinda went dead on us this mid morning. We fished for about three hours. Started in a big pool. We got two, you know, so so fish in there. <clears throat> moved up here into the shallow stuff. Really skinny, most of this water is not even this deep, knee deep. And we had a couple, got one hanging there, not paying attention. They don't count, by the way. Uh, I don't know, we had two or three pushes, but it's not really, activity wasn't that, that red hot. It's about 11 o'clock now, kind of a gray sky. We're gonna take a break and I don't know, we started out really early, right at sun up, and said we got those two fish in the big pool. It was, we went from black to white, came up into the skinny water. We stuck with the olive for a, or a white for a while, switched to tan, got kind of bright light out for a while. So I thought, I thought we had a chance right there. It was gonna, things would change. And it didn't really, didn't really come to fruition, so we, had a couple, you know, near misses. Ones came up and kind of chased and pushed, but not really much commitment. So, uh, you know, pretty good morning. Uh, not bad, just wasn't as red hot as we'd hoped, but pretty good. And got to see how we run the bigger pools in the skinny water. This stuff's, you know, I kept saying to Braden, I don't think there's a rock in this run that I haven't seen a fish behind. You know they're there, it's just the day they don't want to eat. You know, some days they do, some days they don't. But it was pretty it was pretty good for a morning, you know. We got three pretty nice fish and it all worked out. I hope you liked it.